Hi everyone, I'm Anne. This is Of Words on Paper. And for this video I thought I would tell you about three books that I've read, two books that I'm reading, and three books that I want to read soon. I don't really like to make videos about books that I want to read because then I feel bad when I don't read them. So I think this will have a nice balance to it, hopefully. The first book that I've read recently is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson and if you want to know my opinion on this you can check my recent video on autumnal books. There's loads of recommendations, all sorts of genres and one of the books I talk about is An Enchantment of Ravens. I liked this for some reasons and I hated this for some reasons. So, you know, as I said in the other video, I would recommend it depending on what you like in a book or what you like a book to be like. So if you want a more nuanced description and a description of the plot and everything, just go check that video. I will leave it somewhere. And I will quickly move on, and hopefully I won't take too long with this next one either, because I reread The Secret History for the second time this year, and read it for the third time in two years. And as you can see, my copy's kind of battered, I've got lots of posters going on, um, page flags and stuff, and there's a lot of uh, moments that I also dog-eared the page. There we go! nice and focused. I really love this book, it's one of my favourite books of all time and I like it, why? Because one, it's got a, an unreliable narrator and one that you really grow to hate and I love that. I love it because it tells you who did the murder that we're talking about here in the first page of the book. You've got a beautiful prologue that starts with the words The snow in the mountains was melting and Bunny had been dead for several weeks before we came to understand the gravity of our situation. Beautiful. They killed Bunny. How? Why? What happens afterwards? Read the book to know why. I really love it. I love it because of the writing style. I think it's a writing style that's very literary and at the beginning you think oh it's just because this woman is trying to flex on me and trying to show that she can write a lot of elaborate stuff but eventually you realise the reasons behind these choices and you grow to love the descriptions of the landscape, the setting and you discover that there might be more to a lot of the characters than the main narration wants to tell us. It's just so good. And it's a book that definitely rewards revisits, which I really, really love. Because um, every time I read it, I discover different things, and that's why I love rereading it. But anyway, let's move on. The next book I've read is the actually the latest book I've read, and it's a graphic novel, which I really, really loved, called Spinning by Tilly Walden. This First of all, this is gorgeous, let's see, if, yeah, there it is. This is gorgeous and the art inside is also gorgeous. I think I might have, I, I should have selected some pages, however, that's just so gorgeous. It's beautiful. The colour scheme is so pretty as well because it's um, drawn in shades of purple and Walden adds some yellow every once in a while to contrast only during very emotional moments like here you've got a very important scene and you've got some sparkles going on how beautiful is that and this not this graphic novel is basically about figure skating and ice skating which Walden did herself for a big part of her childhood and this is actually a memoir and that's what makes it so impactful as well um, through the excuse of talking about figure skating and ice skating, Walden uses that as a theme to introduce us to other parts of her life and her struggles with coming out as a lesbian and 
a lot of other topics, just depression, mental health, relationships, bullying, and all of these topics are told through the lens of this person's experiences with ice skating in a very sensitive and delicate way. And the fact that it's the writer who is also drawing makes it really intimate and like you get a very lovely glimpse into this person's life. It's just really, really beautiful. I would definitely recommend it. Next, books that I'm reading at the moment. First one is The Odyssey by Homer. This is a different translation to the one I read when I read it for the first time. It's going to be my second reread. No, my second read, so my first reread. Anyway, I'm reading this for a class on The Odyssey, a series of lectures, and we're going to go through it. Like two books each week, so yeah. I've only just started. Um, I feel like the more I study the Odyssey, the more I like it. I used to hate it, especially because I had read it just after the Iliad, and the Iliad was so good and it impacted me so much, that then I was like, this hero, this main character that we've got here is just so annoying. <laughs> and so awful and I just didn't enjoy it at all. Well, I did enjoy it. It's home. I enjoyed it. But I just didn't really care for it. Not to the extent that I cared for the Iliad. So, you know, the more I've been studying it, the more I've been liking it because I've been um, finding out all the complexities with it, all the interesting themes of story, and song and how I like journeys and a lot of stuff. So yeah, looking forward to continuing with this. The other book I've, I'm reading at the moment is The Bellwether Revivals by Benjamin Wood. This is a dark academia book, I guess you could say, that I picked up as soon as I got to Cambridge because it's set in the University of Cambridge. But it's written in a way that doesn't idealise that at all and actually kind of parodies, parodies? Makes fun of the elitism and rich people that come here just for the title and pretend to be all intellectual and actually they just are ridiculous. And it's written in a very, basically what I'm trying to say, it's written in a very self-aware way, which so far I've been really enjoying. Also, it's very nice that the main character doesn't actually study at the university. He works at a nursing home in Cambridge, and he just meets people from the university. So that's a very nice kind of mature detail, which is cool. So far, quite interesting. The main characters, apart from Oscar, the main character, so like the other cast of characters, so far they've been quite stereotypical, but I think in a way it might be intentional, so excited to read more. Now, three books that I might be reading soon, if time and my life allows for it. First is Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. This is a very, very millennial book. I didn't want to want to read this book because I was like, if it's going to be another book about privileged young women trying to find their place in life when actually they've got it so easy. I don't know. You know? You know. But I started reading this partly because of Kira Foster, a uh, booktuber that I really like. And to be honest, our tastes don't really align, which is interesting because she somehow makes me want to read all the books that she talks about, even if afterwards I'm like, oh, it's not very good. I didn't really enjoy it. But she made me want to read this one, and it's about a girl that's in Hong Kong working as a language teacher, and her struggle to find a place in the world. And it's, again, very self-aware. It's got these, it's got this type of writing that I really love, where the writer just is very sarcastic, is very, very aware of all the stereotypes about the particular genre they're writing in, and they sort of go in and, and show you that, yes, I know that these novels tend to be like this. Um, here's how I'm changing it. So, 
so far it's quite nice. I only read, yeah, like 14 pages of it and I really enjoyed it. I, it made me laugh so much. I think it's this sharp, witty humour. Not even witty, more like sarcastic, cynical humour, which I really enjoy. So I'm really, I'm really hoping I can get to this soon. It's also not very long, so it should be, it should be fine. It's also one of the few hardback books that I enjoy reading in hardback. I usually like paper bags just because I just destroy my books a lot, as you can see from um, the way that I treat my copies of The Secret History. But this one is kind of sleek and nice. The next book I want to get to soon is a graphic novel that my boyfriend lent me, and that is Fox Machina Origins, and this is, this is about a D&D podcast that Leon loves, and it's basically a graphic novel telling, it's kind of a prequel, you might say, it's a prequel to the events of the main, it's a prequel to the events of the first season of their podcast, I think, and yeah, I mean, he said it was really fun. I like D&D, even though I don't have a group at the moment to play with. I'm very sad about that. But I can read this and have fun. I'm not a huge fan of podcasts, so I wouldn't really continue with Critical Role, I don't think. But I like being able to read the adventures in a different format. So, yeah. Here you go. Look at, look, look at this art. Look at this art, how beautiful is everyone? This himbo up here, what a lovely man. And obviously, look, look, just just look at, look, look at the women. <laughs> just, you know, not biased or anything. Anyway, the last book that I'm hoping to read soon, and this might be a project for the holidays, um, <laughs> because of how long it is, will be the Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I've also started this book. I started it in the holidays and I was hoping I would finish it before my master's course started. Clearly it hasn't happened. I got, oh, I got a hundred pages into it. It's just that it's got a thousand pages. So, not long. Didn't get very far into it. I love this paperback edition. It's the US paperback. Look how floppy she is. <laughs> how satisfying is that? <laughs> this again is high fantasy. Um, after reading Priory of the Orange Tree, I thought it was time to get back into high fantasy. And this is about many characters. I love that we've got multiple, multiple perspectives. And I don't know, it's about, I think, Shalan is a girl that wants to become an apprentice of this type of magic, I think. Kaladin is a warrior that's been imprisoned for some reason, like a couple of years after his peak as an army leader. And we've got all the perspectives, but I didn't get to meet them in the summer, so I have to continue to see who they will be. So far it's exciting, nice world building, as per when you're reading Brandon Sanderson. And I can't tell you much more. I'm going into it blind because everybody's raving about it. And I kind of like the challenge of a long book as well. So I'll tell you more, I guess. But for now, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Tune in to my next video whenever that will be. Again, I'm trying to be a bit more consistent with the uploads, treating this as more of a hobby to distract myself from uni. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with people, do subscribe to my channel. I will be posting similar videos. I like sit down videos a lot more than vlogs, but I'm gonna try and maybe vlog my life around Cambridge a bit more, just because I feel like finally I've got something eventful to talk about after a long summer of doing nothing because we've been all locked down in the UK. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. So yeah, I will leave it here. 
I will see you very soon.